At least we haven't given anything away. <laughs> For a home run chase, Barry sure has spent a lot of time standing around watching and in pitching around Bonds, the Astros in danger of pitching themselves out of the playoffs. Giants Astros series finale, the Sports Center showcase highlight, and there's Barry Bonds facing Dave Malecki, hitting 478 against him lifetime, 11 for 23. And right away, the count runs up 3 0. Bonds not so pleased. Next pitch. Yeah, that might have been strike one. Instead, Bonds gets the call. Ball 473rd walk of the season. Larry Dirk says, give us a chance, please. Next batter is Jeff Kent. Jeff Kent has been cashing in after every Bonds walk in this series. There's your home run. This is the 22nd for the reigning MVP, but the Giants go up 2-0. Top third, the family all there anticipating, hoping. Houston fans, hey, still worried about winning that division, winning the Central. Malecki's first pitch, and Bonds swings, taps it away. Bonds homeless in his last three games. That's the first time since August that he'd done that. And there he turned on an 0-2 pitch, yanked a 91-mile-an-hour pitch in the upper deck, 2-2 count. Shifts on, ground out. Greg Biggio playing second in the outfield, or maybe just playing a short right field, something like that. Inning over. Top fifth, Giants up 3 nothing. Bonds walks again, and the fans start to boo. A little enraged there at Enron. They want to see Barry hit. They paid their money for the ticket. Now the sixth, family still there with the video camera. Four wide, third walk of the night. 175th walk for Bonds. Now top nine, the rookie Wilfredo Rodriguez bringing the gas. Bonds misses on a fastball, next pitch, Bonds high, and then the next pitch, that ball's history. 69 home runs for Barry Bonds, the 1-1. One -one. There it goes, there it goes. Mark McGuire has a co-owner of the home run throne, number 70 for Bonds. And he is well pleased. And let's take another look, because you know, sometimes when bat meets ball in just the right spot, you know you got it. And Barry Bonds got the Sam bat, and you know he's got it. Look at that, his son there, home plate to greet him, teammates out, the big cat. Barry says he took a few in the ribs, there it is, look at that, absolutely knew he got it. Barry Bonds, 70th home run, here Charlie Saunders, tied with Mark McGuire. That's if you're in the family's box. That's what it looked like. Eric Davis is out there to help him out. And he knows his family's there. Some kisses for the loved ones. And how about John Miller's call? There's a high line deep into right center field. And Bonds has hit number 70 into the upper deck. <laughs> he has tied McGuire. You hit 70, you get to come out, you get to take bows, you get to have flash balls blind you. And plenty of people there for the historic home. Well, first team before individuals, though. The Giants sweep two and are sweep and are just two out in the wild card. No worse than two back of the D-backs then. 70 gives Bonds a homer in every National League park this season. Did it in 468 at-bats, 41 fewer than McGuire. 564 career homers, seventh alone in the all-time list, one ahead of Reggie Jackson and Rodriguez, the 57th different pitcher that Bonds has homered off this season. It's probably his favorite one, too. Bob Holtzman with The Man. Barry, this has to be a feeling few of us have ever experienced. Describe it for me the best you can. Uh, <laughs> I really can. I, you know, I told you I wasn't going to hold back any emotions this time. You know, I, I, I feel it's a great honor to share something with a great ball player. Who I think Mark McGuire is a great ball player. You know, he's always established power. You know, and he put the game to a new level and new heights. And, you know, it's really an honor to share that with him. And, and, and it's great because we won. And, and that, that's the key. We, we had a victory behind it. Describe the pitch for me. Fastball looked like up. Yeah, it was a fastball. And, um, you know, after he threw me the first two pitches, you know, just something in my heart just said, he, you know, he's going to pitch to me. And everyone kept saying, be patient, be patient. And, you know, we can do it. We can do it. We can win. Just be patient. We can win. And I said, you know, as long as we win, it, I'm going to be happy. And, you know, I, I didn't show any frustration. When it was 8-1 and they intentionally walked me, I, that's when I got a little bit frustrated because I was like, you know, it's not a close game. And there's no guarantee I'm going to get a hit anyway. And um, I think Robbie Thompson was the, was the one who showed the most emotions at that time going, you know, come on. This is, this, this is getting a little bit embarrassing. And then, you know, I got it. And I'm glad that it's over. And I'm happy that we won. There have been so many interviews with the media, so much pressure involved in both this home run chase and the pennant race. Describe what it's like. Relieved at this point, I assume, to finally get to number 70? 
Well, I, I'm relieved at that point, but I'm not relieved because we still got to win three games, and that's the most important thing. And, you know, my goal is to get back into the postseason, and that, that's very, very important to me. And, and, you know, I'll say time and time again, I respect Mark McGuire. I think he's a great athlete and a great power hitter, and he's established it. And I, I mean, it's an honor for me to share this with him. But I want, I want the playoffs. I want the playoffs. I'm not done. Well, you got three more games to try and get there. Your career high before this was 49. Is something different this year? God, man, that's it. Just God. Yes, from God. That's it. Barry, congratulations. Thank you very much for your time. Barry Bonds, Mark McGuire, both on 70. Barry Bonds, three more games to go. Back to you. Thanks, gentlemen. Bonds reaches his 70th homer, four games faster than McGuire did in 98. Big Mac did in his 509th and final at bat that year. Bonds with three games and at least nine more plate appearances to add to his total, provided Dodger pitchers don't you know, turn into pro bowlers and just start rolling it up there. Arizona looking to stay two up on the Giants by completing a sweep of Denny Nagel and the Rockies. Luis Gonzalez well, competing with Bonds for league place. MVP. That's a double. That'll score Danny Batista. Luis, one for four. He's hitting 324. 139 RBIs for Gonzo. Later in the first, two nothing D-backs. Craig Council. A solid addition for Arizona. Two for four, 279. Reggie Sanders, Mark Grace would score. Four nothing Arizona. A two run double for Council. Bottom three, it was 4 1 D backs. Nagel still in there facing Reggie Sanders. Reggie Sanders, two for four, two runs scored. He's hitting 263. And that's number 33 for Sanders. D backs hang on to win it. 5 4. Arizona completing that sweep to remain two games ahead of the Giants in the NL West. For Reggie Sanders, 10 of his 33 homers this year have come against Colorado. Brian Anderson with his first win since July 22nd. So it's on to Milwaukee for the Diamondbacks, where Arizona, get this, is 4-5 and five this year. The Giants, two games behind the D-backs in the West, and two games behind the Astros for the wild card, are hosting Los Angeles. San Francisco just 7-9 and nine against the Dodgers this year. It's a habit Ricky Henderson has had for the 23 years he's been a Major League Baseball player. Just ask anyone who's ever played with a future Hall of Famer. The habit? Ricky talks to himself. Henderson says, no, no, I don't. Said Ricky, I never answer myself, so... How can I be talking to myself? I'm just reminding myself of what I'm trying to do. <laughs> Thursday against the Dodgers, Henderson reminded himself it was time to break the tie, as in Cobb's all-time run scored mark. Ricky, a run scored away from breaking Cobb's major league record of 2,246 runs scored. In San Francisco, he drew blanks. There's a high fly ball, left field, that ball to the wall, that's the wall, and there goes another home run, and there goes a new all-time run scoring record by Ricky Henderson. Oh, Henderson sliding into home plate, keeping a promise to his teammates that he would do that. That plaque was given to him by his teammate, Tony Gwynn. There's the curtain call, even blowing kisses. He gets congrats from everyone. Bottom four, Ricky, remember, two hits away from 3,000. Check swing down the line. This thing's moved foul. First base coach Alan Trammell tells umpire John Shuhawk, wait a minute, hit the chalk. It should be a fair ball. It should be a hit for Ricky. Watch again. John Shuhawk, the ump, actually has his back away from the ball. He wasn't even looking at it. And later after the game, Shuhawk said to Ricky, I had my back to the ball and I didn't even see it. Bottom six, Tony Gwynn pinch hitting. and gets a nice ovation and he draws a walk. Up next, Ricky with another shot to get a hit. Uh, he's not going to get it that way. Yeah. Padres do win the game. Six to three. By the way, Padres rookie pitcher Jason Middlebrook got the victory on Ricky's historic night. Interesting considering if it wasn't for Middlebrook, Barry Bonds may not have made history Thursday night as well. Middlebrook, remember, was the pitcher that gave up home run numbers 65, 66, and 68 to Mr. Bonds. As for Ricky on his record-breaking night... So much joy came through me that, you know, it was finally, uh, you know, over with. It was finally that I had broke the record, and eventually I had hit a home run. So, you know, I was very excited at that time. But, you know, it was a thrill that just to, when I came to home plate just to have my teammates at home plate and celebrate it with me. I thought Ricky said it best after after the game ended and Boach came in and, you know, said his little say for a toast for Ricky. And Ricky said, you know, the runs record is really a team record. It's a team record. I can't do it all by myself, although today I got it done myself, and these guys fell out. And if you're wondering if Ricky Henderson plans to retire after this season, Ricky says no. He wants to come back for another year. No player has crossed home plate more than Ricky and faces the rock. And beating the Phils again would give them at least a share of their 10th straight division title. 
For those of you who don't enjoy math, Brian Jordan summarizes the importance of winning on Thursday. Quote, we do that, that's the stake in their heart. Well, I think we're all clear on that point then. Every 25-year-old Brandon Duckworth. Talk about pressure, huh? Big start for him. Bottom first. Braves trail in one zip. Cheaper Jones with two on. That's in the gap. Marcus Giles, Julio Franco will score. Braves lead at 2-1, and Duckworth was done after four and a third, six hits, four earned runs. Top seven, Braves leading 4-2. Pat Burrell, liner off Rudy Cienez, and there's Andrew Jones coming hard, and he's got it. Burrell rhymes with Pearl, not happy. We look at it again, it's the same thing, only slower, and Jones out there bringing the glove. It's a gold glove. Bottom seven, still 4-2. Brian Jordan off Real Cormier. Real Cormier, that's French for home run. Jordan's 25th. The Braves go up 6-2. Top nine, same. John Smoltz on to finish it off. He starts and finishes the play there. Johnny Estrada grounding out. The Braves win it by a count of 6-2. So the Phils not going to do it right now, it looks like. Braves get their share. They now have three games to get the rest of it. Chipper Jones for... Oh, so close to the postseason. Top first, Fernando Vina at Miller Park. Lifts one out there. James Mouton giving effort. Effort's the key to success. Those walls are padded. Top first, one zip cards. Two on for Big Mac. Mark McGuire. That is deep. And that is a single. Albert Pujols, who else comes home to score? He's scored all of the Cardinals runs this season. Bottom second, same score. Matt Morris warming up. Louis Lopez, done. Jesse Levis. That is a nasty breaking ball. Let's go to the fifth. Brewers trailing 5-0. Elvis Pena, he's not fishing. Just looking at the hook. Next batter, Bernie Brewer. No cheese. More six innings, three hits, 10 Ks. Top six, cards 5-0. Trying to add to it. A couple on for Mark McGuire. And behold, the power of cheese. McGuire's 29th home run of the year puts the cards up 8-0. He needs just 41 homers over the weekend now to reach 70. That's probably a long shot. Cards win at 10-3. Is full, two out, Demetri Young. Kerry Wood takes care of business with a high heat. Ten Ks in six innings. Runners on first and second, nobody out for Sammy. Jose Acevedo getting Sosa to ground to the 6-4-3 double play. Eric Young moving up to third with two out. Would that matter? Next batter, Chad Myers. Acevedo gets Myers on the check swing. He's out of trouble. Bottom of the seven now still scrolls with the runner on second, Todd Hunley. Two-run home run off Acevedo. Hunley's 12th of the year. The game would be called at the with the same score in the eighth. It was 2 nothing. It's a final. Red Sox, Orioles, Tim Raines. Tim Raines Jr. playing in this one. Senior was 0 for 4. Junior 1 for 4. Speaking of juniors, Cal Ripken Jr. in a horrible slump. 0 for 33. So he has a fan throw a little pixie dust on the bat. Just like that in the fifth. He gets a single off Shea Hillenbrand's glove. And the fans probably more relieved than Ripken in this thing. Bottom nine, one out. Orioles trail 5-4. Ripken at the dish. Not a hero on that one. Oogie or Bina gets him. Cal one for four in the night. Red Sox hang on to win it. Five for four. Marlins over the Expos. Derek Indians, Royals, Cleveland getting its rotation set for Seattle. Bartolo Colon going on three days rest and didn't do so hot. Bottom second already down 3-1. Carlos Beltran double scoring Luis Alisea. Juan Gonzalez misplays it. Angel Barroa scores. Beltran takes third. Royals score six in the second. Take a 6-1 lead. And Colon used up his 50-pitch limit in an inning and a third. Six runs, four hits, four walks. Bottom four, Beltran's bat. He's a little more pine tar. Into the dugout. And look out. Wednesday starting pitcher Mike McDougal gets it. Look at it again. There goes the lumber and McDougal. Spot shadowed. Head down. Next thing you know, bang. Dougal Woozy was taken to the hospital for evaluation. Perhaps feeling better because these Royals won it by a count of 8-4. to four. Cologne going to go in game one against the Mariners. Game. Starting at second, bottom fifth, Chris Gomez. Shot. Wilson, nice backhand. Defense will save you some runs once in a while. Fine play by Wilson. And then he's a utility infielder. So in the eighth, he's over playing shortstop. Toby Hall in the batter's box. He finds Wilson. Big chopper. Charge it, charge it. Bear hit. Oh, luscious. Yankees, though, lose it by a count of 4-1. to one. Perhaps more of a concern in New York. Orlando Hernandez still suffering from a tired arm. Might be out for the first round of the playoffs. And El Duque, 8-1 and one in his career in the postseason. Rangers and Mariners, top three. Rangers down 6 nothing. A-Rod has a say with that with his bat. 52nd home run of the year. His 200th hit of the season. 
A-Rod joining Babe Ruth, Hack Wilson, Jimmy Fox, the only players with a 50 homer, 200 hit season. Congratulations. Mark McLemore picking his spots. That scores Ramon Vasquez. McLemore filling in nicely for Carlos Guillen. 16 to 1, the final All Mariners. So another 98 record is tied. That's right. With a victory, Seattle ties the 98 Yanks for the most wins by an AL club. What about the A's and Angels? Barry Zito in the dugout. Jermaine Dye telling him he needs to do something with his hair. So he puts his hat back on. Bottom three, one out, one on. Davinon facing Mark Mulder. Ramon Hernandez throws out Jose Nieves, trying to steal second. Try to throw him out. And then Miguel Tejada gets Ishmael Valdez down the line. Ramon Hernandez and FP Santangelo would score. Tejada into second with a double. Hey, this is shocking. The A's win. Just kidding.